or the yard work of day and the flea market, signing sheets out from it. So that is just that for me. Anyway, uh, that is in the announcement statement. I'm going to back over to Colton. Also, there's an office manager position at Colton. A green action in the second quarter. So, Trinity West Longview.
Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God for our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God is love been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Amen. For while we, while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person. Someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ Jesus. So he had all his disciples, he sent them out. 
to spread the good news to everyone. So they were able to go multiple places all at once, right? Much like the newspaper gets delivered to multiple places all at one time. So that job is now falling on us. But we need to take the news of Jesus, and we need to deliver, much like it might be in print, we can take a Bible, we can take whatever, but we need to deliver the good news of Jesus. Still today, there's a lot of people who really need to hear it. We can always do the thing extra, extra, we all about it, type thing, and we can share that good news of Jesus with the world and with people that are waiting for us. Do you pray with me? Dear Lord, we know that we need to spread your good news all around the world. And there are those that still are waiting and striving to hear it be delivered to them. Help Lehman and help all of us be one of those individuals who can take and spread your news, whether it be in print or whether it just be in words, or maybe it's in acts of kindness to those who are waiting patiently to be able to hear and to have that news delivered to them. So just be with him as he delivers this news on everything that you've done to his friends and to his neighbors and to anyone he meets and all these things we ask. Most gracious God, as we gather here in your presence, help us as we honor our earthly fathers on this day. Remember to honor you. Heavenly, eternal Father, who gathered all of us in, made us a child of yours. May we remember all that you've done for us and all that we shall receive from you to give to those who ask. Lord, 
we we do thanks and joys for our fathers here on earth. Some who are still living, and some who have passed. Help us, Lord, remember the laughter, the sadness, the highs and the lows. We have our fathers. We give thanks to you for the men in our lives. Lord, we give you thanks for safe travels to Kendall Commons, for safe travels back home. The joy it was, Lord, to just see some individuals that we haven't seen for a while. To be able to share and embrace and to talk to them and to have that moment of peace with them. The Lord, we know that the conference was on vacation. There was business that needed to be in. Lord, we just know that as we were voting on things that would affect not only this church, but churches across this conference. The people were going to human mind. Lord, we ask that all the legislation was passed that it gives glory to you. Lord, we ask that you be with those churches who are no longer among us. The individuals who are no longer a part of the United Methodist Church. Lord, we don't know all the reasons for leaving, but we do. Lord, help us remain in connection with them through friendships. Developed over the years. We can all just come together and praise you. And be with the individuals who are taken to the hospital, Lord, for their various ailments. Watch over them and give them strength because they were far away from any family that they had. doctors and do those nurses that are treating <coughs> these individuals are made well enough to head home and to the love of their families here Lord we ask that you be with Patty we've heard reports of for surgeries. Lord, give her the courage to face each new day. Let her feel your presence as you work. Be with Shrell and be with Judy. Because they are both under the weather, Lord. We just ask that you put your healing hands upon them. Be 
can take away whatever illness that may be that has afflicted them at this time. So they may come and worship with us in the near future again. Lord, we just also ask that you be with our children. this church within this community so we can raise new disciples for you and Lord just be with each and every one that's on our concern celebrating birthdays and those who are celebrating anniversaries. May these birthdays and anniversaries be joyous occasions to watch over each and every one of us. Not only today, Today is uh, Matthew 9, 35 through 10, 8. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. And he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord to harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over the unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve, Jesus sent out the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep in the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payments, give without payments. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Inform me, please.
time a little boy is asked to define Father's Day. And he said, it's just like Mother's Day, only you don't have to spend as much on the presents. <laughs> and someone else noticed that the word father appears in the dictionary just before the word potato and just after the word fat. So to all of us, the ten fathead fathers, happy fathers. <laughs> Carl A. Boyle, a sales representative, was driving home when he saw a group of young children selling Kool-Aid at the corner in the neighborhood. They had posted the typical hand-drawn sign over their stand. Kool-Aid, 10 cents. Carl was intrigued. He pulled over to the curb. A young man approached and asked if he would like strawberry or grape cooling. A Carl placed his order and handed the boy a quarter. After much deliberation among the children, they determined that he had some change that was coming back to him and rifled through their cigar box until they finally came up with the correct amount of change. The boy returned with the change, then stood by the side of the car. He asked Carl if he had finished drinking. Just felt, said Carl. Why? And the boy replies, that's the only cup that we have. <laughs> and we need it to this stay in business. It's difficult to operate a Kool-Aid stand or business if you only have one cup. And we sometimes can make that mistake in the church. This morning we are focusing our attention on the evangelistic task of the church. For many persons, the word evangelism brings to mind one cup, the televangelist and the tent revivals that we all remember, or the street corner preacher handing out tracts to people as they pass by. In some churches, it means a once a year special event that might only happen, or a particular strategy for incorporating newcomers into the life of the church. By limiting our evangelism, uh, our li by limiting our vision of evangelism to just one cup, we may be cycling Christ's work, though, now on earth. And we cheat ourselves then of one of the most rewarding endeavors that Christ offers us. One time a woman told her daughter about a church that burned down. And confused the child asked, if a church is not a building, but it's a group of people. How do you burn down a church? I'm sure everybody remembers the little thing with the hand. It's the church or the steeple open up the door because there's all people, or there's the church or the steeple open up where all people. The church is not just a building. To those of us that live in 21st century America, we're prone to think of the church, though, as just a building where we gather just on Sunday mornings. But that's a false model to the Apostle Paul in chapter, Acts chapter 17 said, the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and of earth and does not live in temples built by hands. Jesus taught us that God lives inside of people, not inside a building. You and I, that's where Jesus lives. And our bodies, then, are the temple of God. That means that wherever you are, wherever I am, there is the church. Seven days, 365 days out of the year, there is the church. Not just one hour on Sunday mornings. And Jesus said, for on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. We need, do not need to be afraid of those who can kill the body. We do not need to be afraid of those who might get angry with us when we share the message of Christ. We do not need to be afraid of something, or we do not need to be afraid of standing up, though, for the gospel of Christ either. Rather, we should be afraid of not sharing the gospel of Christ, because Jesus is Lord, and Jesus wins, all the time. Jesus calls us to make followers of Jesus to change the world, to make disciples for the transformation of the world. Jesus calls us to be people with a messy life, 
who join hands with other people who have messy lives to follow Jesus. But are we doing this? Or is the church just that building to us? Are we hiding inside our buildings? Are we going out? Are we afraid to maybe step outside our buildings? Do we offer Christ to the lost? The broken and the dying world? Do we hide behind our doors? Christianity, it was never ever meant to be a spectator sport. Now when Karen and I heard this, actually at annual conference, about the spectators and the tramp from the one bishop from West Virginia who spoke about creating a cloud of dust so large because in ancient societies, their sporting events were held outside on dirt. And the people, as they did their sporting events, would create a cloud of dust that the spectators could not see. Are we creating a cloud of dust ourselves, or are we being spectators? As I said when speaking to Lehman, I like sports. I mean, I've been to them. I love to watch sports. I like the Steelers as much as the rest of you. But there are times when I actually can pass up watching a Steeler game. And I like baseball, and I like the tennis basketball games. And I like to avoid the different things. But have you ever paid attention to an actual adult sports fan? They arrive at the stadiums hours before the game actually starts. And before the game, you see them, they're carrying their coolers, maybe. They're wearing their team shirts. They're wearing the hats of their favorite team. They set up their pop-up tents. They have a nice, grand old, you know, tailgate park. But many of those fans, if you really and truly ever look at them, they look like they probably haven't played any kind of sport themselves since high school. Unfortunately, that's true. But watching professional sports requires a lot of eating and a lot of standing in line at the way for the bathroom, especially when, sorry. But occasionally, something exciting happens on the field, field. And what happens? People spill their beer as they stand to cheer on the player who just scored one for the team. And usually, if you're the person sitting in front of that, you're drenched and smelling like beer at that point. But as Christians, were we made to be the spectators, or are we made to be the players? Are we fans, or are we followers? Are we dragging our floors and setting up our tailgate parties for Jesus? Are we cheering, and are we spilling our beer when something exciting happens? Or are we the person who sits there and keeps our hands crossed? He goes, that's what Being a fan of Jesus is not the same as being a follower of Jesus. And again, are we creating a cloud of dust? Or are we just sitting there? You and I are going to step up from the crowd of the curious. And we are to join the team of the committed then. We are to create a cloud of witness. Jesus' ministry was a living out of the good news. And as followers or apprentices, if you want to say that, of Jesus, this is our calling as well, to not just be a spectator. In our reading from Matthew, we see that Jesus went through all of the towns and the villages and teaching the good news of the kingdom and healing everywhere that he went, healing people of disease and of sicknesses. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on those people because they were harassed. They were helpless. They were like sheep without a shepherd. In other words, Jesus was moved to the depths of his being when he saw the crowd of ordinary, looking people living with messy lives. Jesus was moved to the depths of his being when Jesus saw you and myself. Jesus was moved to the depths of his being when Jesus sees all the other folks living around us with those messy lives also. And we, the body of Christ on this earth, we are called then to move, be moved to the depths and move out of those depths. And when we see our own fellow human beings, we are to join hands with them and follow Jesus together. 
Christianity is not a spectator sport. Christians are not merely fans of Jesus. Instead, Christianity is a distinctive way of life. Following Jesus requires much more than having certain beliefs and attending certain religious services. Christianity means much more than reading the Bible to look for the pages of Scripture which confirm what we already think we know or how we currently live. Christianity is supposed to undermine our thinking. It's supposed to confront our way of life and produce a change in our heart and of our actions. Many of us may be quite captivated by Jesus without actually surrendering ourselves, surrendering ourselves to the discipline and endurance that is necessary, though, to become a follower of Jesus. We can feel naked, and we can agonize when we realize that the sense of identity is not matched up by our actions. Are we Christians, and do we actually act like a Christian. In some ways, it's actually terrifying to think to be invited to be a follower of Jesus. People are afraid of it. Jesus told the crowd of spectators were the fans. If anyone wants to follow me, they must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Well, whoever wants to save their life, they will lose it. And if whoever loses their life for me, they will find their lives. We are called to be open to transformation. We are called to be open to change. We are to be people living with messy lives, joining hands with other people with messy lives to follow Jesus. Christianity was never meant to be confined, again, to just one hour on a Sunday morning. It's a 24-7 way of life. It's a 24 7 way of life based on God's grace, not on our snobbish exclusiveness. It is a 24 7 way of life based on your heart, not on your pocketbook. It is shaped by regular worship, the regular study of scripture, daily prayer, fasting, and Christian fellowship. It is something that has to become second nature for us. It is our soul and our body that makes us human. But it is God's Holy Spirit and then our discipline in following Jesus that makes us a Christian. We are called to jump out of the stands, change into our game clothes, and then run out onto the field and create that cloud of dust. And just like in baseball, basketball, football, or any kind of sports, you play the way you actually practice. If we don't practice how to be a Christian 24-7, it will be very difficult to a person who walk like, talk like, and play like those who follow Jesus in. Christianity is something that we must learn. We have to learn how to do it. And we learn from Matthew as we, people with messy lives, actually join hands and follow Jesus, seeking to follow God is a messy process that actually intersects with the most personal aspect of humanity. Christianity is not a spectator sport. The story was told one time of two men walking down a Mexican beach, talking with one another. They could see a man in a distance throwing something into the ocean. As they got closer, they saw that he was bending over, picking something up and throwing it into the ocean. The closer they got, they noticed that he was one of the natives. There were starfish on the beach, which were left by the outgoing tide. The native was throwing them out where they could then swim away. One of the two men asked, what are you doing? The man replied, I'm throwing the starfish back into the ocean. If they don't get back to the deeper water, they will die. Then the other man replied, I understand that part, but look at this beach. It is covered with starfish. There must be thousands stranded out here. How do you feel that this will make a difference? You're only one person. The native bent over, picked up another starfish, 
and hurled it out into the sea. And when he smiled on his, on his face, he said, made a difference to that one. There are thousands who need to the Lord and need the care of Christians. Each one of us can make a difference to one person. Are we willing then to part company with the way things have always been done? Or are we willing to make Christianity not only something we believe, but also our way of life, our 24 7 way of life? And then are we willing to be people with messy lives, joining other people with messy lives in order to follow Jesus? We pray that. Dear Lord, there are so many of us who stand by and watch others do the work. Help us, Lord, not be those spectators who just stand there but that we jump in and we help other people. We join our messy lives with their messy lives and we follow you. Help us make that difference one person at a time. Lord, we ask that you Come into us that we can be a 24 7 Christian and not a 60 minute Christian. Lord, help each and every one of us see those opportunities to present themselves to us. Witness to your good news to all who are good. You asked us to follow you and help us be true disciples of yours. All these things we ask. Amen. Now, please remain seated.
ushers will please come forward.